Hello class, I'm Professor Dwight Hughes for the Intec 103 IP subnetting course at Clark College. This is the lecture on IPv6 subnetting. Let's begin by comparing IPv4 subnetting to IPv6 subnetting. In an IPv4 subnet, you'll recall that we had three default masks. In CIDR notation, they are slash 8, slash 16, and slash 24. We created subnets in IPv4 by borrowing bits from the left of the host portion of the IP address. We could not use the first and last hosts in each subnet as they were reserved for the network ID and the broadcast. We used VLSM to make best fit containers for our hosts, conserving the maximum number of IPs. In IPv6, we have a single default prefix of slash 64. Subnetting is built into the prefix, so there's no need to borrow bits from the host portion, or now called the interface ID. So we have a single hex tet, 16 bits reserved specifically for subnetting. If you needed to subnet further, you are allowed to borrow the bits from the interface ID portion of the IP address from the left, just as you do in IPv4. The first IP address in every subnet and the last 128 IP addresses are all reserved for any cast. So they can't be used um, to assign to host. With so many IPs in IPv6, we don't make best fit containers for our hosts. We simply make them for the subnets. So if you needed three subnets, we would make a best fit container for that. And we wouldn't look at the number of hosts per subnet because each subnet would be a slash 64. So six, two of the 64 hosts is a incom incomprehensibly large number of host addresses. Let's talk about some best practices you need to keep in mind as we do our subnetting. Hexadecimal alphabetic letters, A through F, are always typed or written in lowercase only. All final subnets are always slash 64 prefix length. So every subnet that devices are put into have a slash 64 prefix. The nibble rule says always borrow bits in nibbles. So if you needed two bits for subnets, you borrow four. If you need five bits, you borrow eight. So we always borrow up to the nibble boundary, as you'll see in a moment. That's really going to simplify. In fact, all of these rules are here to simplify IPv6 subnetting and addressing for human beings. These rules are really best practices. They're not laws, so they can be broken. You don't have to borrow on the nibble. You could borrow one bit if you just need one bit. Your final subnets don't have to be slash 64. They could be slash 80 or slash 96 or even slash 127 or slash 128. You don't have to write your hexadecimal alphabetic letters A through F in lowercase. You could write them in uppercase or even mixed case. A few of them lowercase, a few uppercase. But none of that makes really good sense in terms of um, developing some consistency and simplicity in how we do our addressing. So the industry has identified these as best practices that all network admins should follow. We're going to Primarily in this lecture, look at two examples I've put together of IPv6 subnetting. One on a simple network that only needs a single level of subnetting, much like you would do in classful IPv4 um, subnetting. And then the next example will be a more complex network that needs subnets within subnets. And we'll be doing that uh, similar to how IPv4 did VLSM. Let's get started with example one. In this simple network, we have to begin with our two prerequisites that we need whenever we do subnetting, the user requirements and the assigned network. I can see that I have an assigned network here and it has a prefix of 60, meaning that I can't use any of the bits prior to slash 61. The first 60 bits are locked out to me and we know that our subnetting bits are from 48 to 64. So I'll be able to use subnetting bits 60 to 64. So I have four subnet bits that I may use for my subnets. That's one thing to know. The second thing to know is your user requirements for how many subnets. I see that we have three subnets. So we are going to 
use our finger math to calculate the number of bits we would need for that. Two, four. We need two bits to accommodate the three subnets. The nibble rule, however, tells us to round that up to the closest nibble boundary. So the closest thing to two bits in the nibble will be four bits. And so we'll go ahead and borrow four bits, creating 16 subnets. We're only going to do one level of subnetting, so we'll need to have all of our subnets end up with slash 64 prefix lengths. Step one is rewrite the IPv6 assigned network address in its expanded form. IPv6 addresses are normally written in their compressed form with the leading zeros removed and all zero hextets removed and replaced with a double colon. So we'll need to reinflate this number to its expanded form as shown here. Step two, we need to identify the assigned prefix that we've begin, been given, slash 60, and the new custom prefix. And we'll draw these in as lines. In IPv4, this was a tool called binary zoom that we used to do this. And with IPv6, we don't need to take this to binary because we're working in nibbles. We can draw it directly on the IPv6 address. Much simpler. The third thing we need to do, step three, we dial in the first, second, and third subnets. There's no reason to use Scratchpad, another tool we don't need, because we're working with whole nibbles. As long as we start counting at zero, we count zero, one, two, and what, let's go ahead and count them out. We would have 16 of them. Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, A, B, C, D, E, and F as shown here. We only need the first three, so we'll go ahead and assign those to marketing and sales, our WAN and production and research. Well, we're done. In this example, we used all four bits, one nibble from the subnet portion of the IPv6 assigned network to create our subnets for our three network locations. There was only one level of subnetting that we did, so all final subnets were at the slash 64 prefix length. We use three of our 16 subnets, leaving 13 available for future use. Let's take a look at example two. Here's our prerequisite user needs and assigned network information. So again, just like we always need every time we subnet, we have to identify what our assigned network address is. I can see it is a slash 48 prefix length and we know that we have subnet bits from slash 48 to slash 64. So I have a full 16 bits or one hextet of subnets to work with. I can see that this network needs a Western region and Eastern region. It has several sites in the Western region, site A, B, and C, several sites in the Eastern region, site D and E, and the notes say that there are departments at each site location of sales, accounting, production, and management. I will take this information and write it into a table or list as shown on the right of this slide. So one column for the west region, one column for the east, for site A, the four departments, for site B, the four departments, and so on. So we're going to create three levels of subnets, one for the regions, one for the site locations, and one for the departments. So let's start with level one of subnetting, which will be the regions. We'll rewrite the IPv6 address. This will be step one. Just like we had an example one, step one is to rewrite our IPv6 assigned network address in its expanded form. Step two will be to borrow the number of nibbles we need to provide the subnet. So one nibble will provide 16 subnets, which is the adequate amount for east and west will identify the assigned prefix and the new custom prefix by drawing them into the number as shown. Step three, we'll dial in our first and second subnets. So zero and one, and we'll go ahead and write those out in their compressed form and assign them to west and east. That finishes level one. It's time to start with our level two. Level two, we'll go ahead and take west and east and subnet each of those into subnets for our site locations. So step one will be to rewrite those in their expanded form as shown here. Step two is to borrow the number of nibbles that we need to create the subnets. 
So we need three sites in the west, and so one nibble will do that. And in the east, we need two sites, and one nibble will do that. So we go ahead and draw our lines indicating where our subnet bits are. Then we use step three, dial in the first, second, and third subnets for the west, and the first and second for the east, and then write those out in their compressed form so they can be assigned to site A, B, C, D, and E. We're done with level two. Let's go on to a third level of subnetting. Level three, departments. We start again with step one. We rewrite each IPv6 assigned network address in its expanded form. So we take the um, ID for each site location and write that out. And then step two, we borrow the number of um, bits we need for our departments. So we have four departments. So we borrow one nibble because the nibble provides 16 subnets, which is adequate for four departments. But wait, we borrow one additional nibble. This is going to be our final round of subnetting. We don't need to subnet further, so we're going to go ahead and take this all the way to this last 64 boundary and use a total of two nibbles for our subnets. So we will be creating 256 subnets instead of 16. And we'll be using four of them. We'll identify the assigned prefix and the new custom prefix, as shown here. And step three, we go ahead and dial in 0123 for our department sales, accounting, production, and management for site A. Then we take the site ID for site B and we dial in the 0123 subnets for sales, accounting, production, and management for site B. We do the same for C and for D, and for E. So we're done there, and to summarize, in this example, we did three levels of subnetting. First, we used four bits from the subnet portion of our IPv6 assigned network address to create the subnets for our two regions, west and east. Second, we further subnetted those regions using four more bits from our subnet portion of the IPv6 assigned network to create subnets for the site locations within each region. And then third, we did another round of subnetting of those site location subnets using our remaining eight bits from the subnet portion to create the department within each site, within each region. I hope now you have a better understanding of IPv6 subnetting.